domestic violence ideally aims at any kind of violence suffered by a woman uh, by the hands of her husband her in-laws even in a re- live-in relationship so her uh, the boyfriend or fiance whoever she's living in the relationship without marriage for that if any kind of violence suffered by a woman who is in a domestic relationship domestic relationship like i said can be your husband can be your in-laws can even be your father can be your brother can be your boyfriend can be your fiance can be any of these uh, domestic spectrum of a relationship so any relationship in which a woman lives and she is been suffering violence violence can be mental which is a lot of taunts angry outbursts all of these it could be physical being hit is being physical can be of the nature of sexual where you are as i spoke in one of my earlier videos um, like marital rape is a sexual offense so uh, the violence can be sexual the violence can also be financial financial is not providing the woman enough money to run the house not providing the woman permission to go and also work which is a big problem in most of our uh, most corners of our country a woman is not allowed to work to make her own money earn her own money if a woman is allowed to work her money is not her money she is required and asked and expected to give all of her earnings to her husband and not have any income of her own so this is also financial abuse where you are not allowed to keep your own money keep your own uh, earnings you know and you have to give it all away so this is also financial abuse so there are multiple kinds of abuse then there's another kind of abuse which is coming out also is the abuse where a woman is always living in fear that na she will not be able to live in her house this in laws house or husband's house she's not allowed to live there because she's always in this fear that any day she will be asked to leave the house so these are this is now talking about multiple type of uh, offenses uh, violences against a woman now any woman suffering from any of these violence any of these one two multiple any regardless any of this violence she can go to court and ask the court that i am suffering from this violence i do not want to continue suffering in this violence however i want to be part of the re- domestic re- relationship i don't want to leave the relationship i like being in the relationship i like being a wife i like being a mother i like being a sister i like being in the relationship i like being what i want to be in the relationship has to continue but this person is a violent uh, rather is an abuser and abusing me so i want some correction to happen over here because i complaining is not going to help i need a authority to tell me that now uh, tell this person to stop abusing me and let us both live comfortably and nicely technically it's like bachpan mein hum log jab bolte the na mummy ko mummy mere ko bhai mat mere ko maar raha hai is same logic is the thing of happening in court now going to a higher authority who can give punishment and also tell the person do not uh, be abusive uh, with proper authority so that is what ideally should be written in the domestic violence application also so when you are drafting a domestic violence application remember it is a complaint the reason it is given an application or it's mentioned it's a complaint is because you are actually complaining so if you are going to be complaining and you are appealing your application is also an appeal it's an appeal to help if it's an appeal to help if it's a complaint you cannot miss out on important points you have to mention what relationship establish the relationship so what relationship it is are you married if it is married then mention the date of marriage place of marriage under what rituals you got married so now say so if it's not a marriage if it's uh, if it's your in-laws that you are uh, complaining against then you mention how they became your in-laws because you got married and you started living with them and this person is connected to your husband by way of mother relationship sister relationship brother father etc those relationships mention the relationship if it is not marriage if it is your brother or your father then mention it this is this person is my brother this person is my father or if it's none of that if it's your boyfriend mention your boyfriend we, we met in so and so so and so place or workplace college university etc we decided to live together we have taken a place on rent and we are living together you having a boyfriend in your uh, you're living in your home your boyfriend living in your in his home and you all are having a dispute is not going to be considered domestic violence please you need to live in a domestic setup so domestic violence matters or domestic setup is most important you need to be living with the person 
However, the argument obviously will stand ki like in laws ke saath bolte ki hum log saath mein kabhi rahe nahi. Like wo gaon mein rehte mein idhar rehte kaise hota hai? But it is still a domestic setup because you are married into that household. Marriage makes it definitely uh, domestic. Being a fiance, being a boyfriend or a girlfriend does not exactly make it completely, absolutely domestic if you are not living together. It has to be a live-in situation. Only then it will be considered to be a domestic setup. So uh, that has to be important. So you have to establish the domestic setup. Once that is established, first initial introduction is going to be that only establishing the setup. Once establish the setup, then you move towards what abuses you suffered. You got abused. You did not get abused is not the prerogative of the lawyer or the person writing your application. The important prerogative of the person writing your application, even if you are doing it yourself or your lawyer is doing it, is how the abuse. has begin and what you believe and that you have suffered an abuse how you have suffered what abuse you have to mention that what kind of a person in all of your abuse you have to also build a character around what kind of person you are and how the persons in the uh, person you been with who's the abuser that person's characteristics it is entirely based on how the person's characteristic is how is your characteristic because many a times what people do not realize is when you are being abused in a relationship it's like in a koi agar tumko maar raha hai to tum maar kha rahe ho ek limit hota hai ki tum maar kha rahe ho fir tumhara bhi haath uthta hai then you also react you will want to hit back tum you will not keep suffering so this is called reactive being a it's a reaction to your abuse so it's a reactive to abuse so when it's a reaction like in a response to stimuli science mein padhte the hum log response to stimuli because you being uh, provoked so much to hit and everything so you react to anger and you react to hit and sometimes your hit is a little too harsh for the man to even understand kare ye me ko maar sakti hai so when you are complaining remember your reactive abuse is also going to come back to you by the person in front he is going to come back and say ki dekh usse bhi me ko maara so when you are going to be telling complaining you have to establish absolutely clearly ki this person has been hitting me or rather has been harming me for not one two three days it's been one month two months we have been married for 10 years and each month of that 10 years i have gone through some some kind of anger or outburst from this person some kind of abuse from this person so many times my money has been taken away you have to mention all of those things so when the response comes no 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 i was not the one who hit she was the one who hit there is already an established story line it sounds wrong to say storyline but it has to be that way it has to be a proper understanding of the storyline of how you were abused right from the day you met that person to going through an understanding that the person is worth your time and effort so that is the reason why you are in, you are in a domestic relationship and a setup that is if you have chosen your husband and your boyfriend but if it is your father and brother you don't choose your parents you don't choose your family so if it's that then you have to mention ki how you believed that this person being your father or being your brother you did not believe that they will ever 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 harm you and it just so happened that in a there was a trigger one particular day or or there has been a small build up or small triggers to eventually coming down to abuse every day it has to be a build up you cannot have directly are isme ko mara explain mara kyu mara kis liye mara kya hua did he did you say something did he say something did you do something that you know would uh, make him angry first question is did you do something to make him angry so means what they were on to understand how did the build up happen why did he hit you so if there is going to be a build up so you have to explain the build up in the draft application i always make sure that i have asked my client everything like literally i need to know everything he when they got married when they started living together how are they like you know how was the scenario at that time how did things change when did the things change around because an abuser knows when or when the like abuse rather so not the abuser my word is wrong the abuser doesn't know when they change because the abuser thinks main to aise hi tha main to hamesha aise hi tha isne ko nahi she didn't understand anything is not my fault the abused the victim knows when things change because the victim initially believed that there is goodness there is a safe security you know i can be in a safe space i can talk what i want i can feel what i want and introduce like wants to be part of that space it's when the shift happens is when they know ki are around this time na around this year na 
आई डोंट नो द मंथ बट इस साल में आई नो अराउंड बारिश का टाइम था यू आर अटैच यू आर अब्यूज टू अर सीजन दैट इज फॉर शो सो बारिश का टाइम था सर्दी का टाइम था गर्मी का टाइम था वॉट डिड यू फील यू रिमेंबर एवरी थिंग यू रिमेंबर विच सॉन्ग वो गोइंग पॉपुलर दैट टाइम यू रिमेंबर एंड अब्यूज a victim an abused person will always remember what was the uh, environment when they abuse began so they'll know also how it was and how you know things progressed uh, the best example for understanding how an abuser an abused relationship is uh, the recent movie darlings which touches on this topic beautifully ki how sometimes most of the times why women do not complain because it's the hot and cold nature this person is good to you and then he gets uh, drunk and then he get uh, angry with you with something so you start wondering if it's not him it is just the alcohol only to realize later on it is not the alcohol it is him so an abuser does not change the abuser stays an abuser regardless of substance or any kind of thing triggering him or her it could be her also there is no uh, this about him and her because uh, there have been a relationships where i have also defended men against women because they are uh, an abuser is abuser an abuser has no sex like a terrorist has no religion abuser has no sex a man can be abusive a woman can be abusive a women who are smart and intelligent who know how to use the law will file a fake case against the man of domestic violence because she has the benefit of domestic violence for her benefit filed by the law of this land there is nothing to protect and defend the man and so she can file a fake case create uh, evidences it could be the most smallest thing that ana could trigger her uh, reaction and she could use it against him so that is the reason why the court wants to understand tune kya kiya is the question tune ye kiya tune wo kiya why they ask all of these things is because to understand ki the person who's come the ob aurat ro rahi hai ye ro rahi hai ये सुर पर रहा है कि सीता है यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड आई मीन आई एम सॉरी इफ आई एम हर्टिंग एनीबॉडीज रिलीजन सेंटिमेंट्स आई मीन आई वांट टू मेक यू अंडरस्टैंड द डाइकोटमी ऑफ इट कि आर यू द रियल पर्सन क्राइंग और आर यू जस्ट फेकिंग इट बिकॉज इफ एनीबॉडी इज बीइंग फॉल्स अबाउट देयर एप्लीकेशन द कोर्ट इज नॉट गोइंग टू एंटरटेन बिकॉज़ दिस इज एन अब्यूज अगेंस्ट द मैन देन ही कैन फाइल डिफेमेशन अगेंस्ट यू बिकॉज़ यू हैव कोटेड हिम टू बी एन अब्यूजर व्हेन ही इज नॉट एन अब्यूजर he's trying to be good to you he's being a regular husband or a partner or you know he's trying to be a regular person in the relationship who's trying to do good for you look out for you be good to you say keep you secured but your aspirations and your abusive mind does not understand that you know he's being good to you you want to harm him some way because of some logical un- uh, understanding disconnect that you've had and that is the why you file something It does not make sense so in your application how do we begin we begin with introduction establish the domestic relationship then you move on to how the thing has ab- how the person has abused you like what you believe to be abuse see again that is why the language matters how the person believed that person was abused because many things hum log bolte hai ki are ek hai ghar pe jhadu bolne ko bol diya to usme galat kya kiya but for a person who's never done it ever in her life she'll be like ha huh? Why am I being asked to do things that I've never been asked at my parents' house? Why am I doing it over here? There is a disconnect in her understanding. For our, for people who have been doing it in their parents' house, in-laws' house, doesn't make a difference. For a person who's never done it, asked to do it, becomes abused for that person because that person says this is not my regular way of life. Why am I being brought here and made to do these things? So understand why the person has been abused. This is a small example, but to understand that abuse how it happened. किस प्रकार का अब्यूज हुआ है एंड किस प्रकार को वो इंसान को लग रहा है कि हाँ ये मेरे साथ गलत हुआ है तो वो एस्टेब्लिश करना है कि ये मेरे साथ गलत हुआ है मुझे मारा गया मारना हाँ बींग हिट इज ऑलवेज एन अब्यूज देर इज नो टू वेज अराउंड इट देर इज नो एनी वे अराउंड इट बींग हिट इज अब्यूज पब्लिकली बींग शेम्ड इज अब्यूज ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स एंगर आउटबर्स्ट इज अब्यूज सो देर इज नो टू वे अराउंड इट्स वेरी डिफिकल्ट टू Go on the other side and say it was reactive abuse. Reactive abuse does not happen publicly. Reactive abuse does not happen in manners which are way regular abuse happens. An abuser, abusers abuse will always happen in places where it hurts. Reactive abuse will not come from a place of thought. It will come from a place of being hurt and being placed hurt will never happen publicly. Will always happen behind closed doors. इसे दिखता नहीं है. And just ne. 
रिएक्टिव अब्यूज सफर किया है उनको लगता है कि अरे निशान रह गया तुम को मारा है सो दे गो एन कंप्लेन सो दैट इज द प्रॉब्लम मेन सफर रिएक्टिव अब्यूज मोर देन वीमेन सफर रिएक्टिव अब्यूज इन अ वे बिकॉज वेन दे रिएक्ट बिकॉज इज अ मैन एंड शी इज अ वुमन वट एवर ही डज कम्स अ लिटल टू हाशो देन अ वुमन लाइक अ वुमन हिटिंग अ मैन एंड अ मैन हिटिंग अ वुमन दर्द औरत को ज्यादा होगा अगर आदमी ने मारा सो रिएक्टिव अब्यूज कमिंग फ्रॉम अ मैन कम्स वे हाशो देन a woman's reactive abuse when you file an application your complaint has to be in a streamline in such a way that it shows ki there is a proper chronology there is a proper understanding you are building up a character that's what i'm saying building up a character so the court also will know ki how honest or how dishonest you are about your application because the reply will come and when the reply comes the reply if there is a dishonest application then the reply will come clearly ki there is been a disconnect in both the stories this narrative is different and this narrative is different so there's a disconnect in the stories there is a disconnect in the narrative and that is when the court will be like okay this is an issue why is there a disconnect that will be an issue so when these after this after you file your application after the reply has also been filed by the uh, person uh, respondent then the next stage obviously will come to understand the disconnect if uh, Of other applications and all not happening, everything goes smoothly. Then it goes to evidence. Considering there is no interim application, there is no many other applications. Then it goes directly to evidence. In evidence, you file everything. Like there is nothing to be not spoken of. Everything has to be filed. You, if you have already filed it in your main application, you have attached your police reports. You have attached your legal notices. You have attached all of those prior to filing your. application you have attached all of those then in your evidence you just refer it back you refer back to saying that this has been filed in so and so exhibit number in the main application if you have not filed it in the main application you file it in your police evidence in your evidence you file everything every police complaint made before coming to court with the domestic violence application every uh, legal notice sent before coming to court every email sent telling the person ki do not do this or do this so however has been the conversation has to be attached every whatsapp message has to be attached everything has to be attached and the evidence if not attached in your main application or your reply to the main application not attached in the evidence both the parties will have to attach everything now the language differs when it comes to the main application and the reply the language is so the applicant states and the respondent states means your lawyer is writing it for you so they state when you file an F, uh, evidence it is evidence by way of affidavit in that you have to say yourself so the language changes from uh, applicant states to i say and also in the this uh, respondent states to i say it becomes that way because it's a personal thing you are filing it yourself you are giving it mai bol raha hu mere sath hua ye sab i have gone through so much dekho mujhe suno so you are asking the court to listen to you so you say i say the language in the states and this is i say this is the basic understanding of filing an application under the domestic violence you have your uh, application and you have your evidence difference is i say state to i say and over here you file in everything the whole uh, story in your evidence you again follow up with the entire story but you, uh, the story is more on the personal level so you'll uh, mention everything whatever you forgotten to mention over your bench comes over here in the evidence everything evidence has to have backup whatever is written in the application with uh, additional what if you have forgotten and you want to add in specifically for your case you file in in your evidence and you so attach every document when it comes to your uh, police complaints to your legal notice everything has to be attached i wanted to know the petitioner in dv case the petitioner files the stage you know after the interim maintenance the stage comes of evidence so the this the petitioner files all the evidences and what happens next the evidences then then they cross examine or 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 immediately after the petitioner files evidence the respondent have to file all the evidences petitioner files evidence then the respondent files evidence and then the cross chief exam uh, examination other than cross examination and arguments so then you have the chief which is the questioning by your lawyer then you have the cross which is the questioning from the opposite lawyer and that is how the this works and then you have the main arguments and then your judgment so it is application reply to application issues are framed interim application whatever is there in the middle then you have the other step is 
filing of evidence filing of evidence by the respondent cross of the applicant cross of the respondent and then the arguments and uh, this is done you have the last judgment chief nahi hota sorry chief you already filed so this is the other way uh, i understand that this is a very technical session regarding the drafting of an application uh, but my question is a little very basic mm-hmm. and i would like to divide my question in two parts uh, mm-hmm. part 1 is uh, what is your take on the protection officers who are required to aid and assist victims of domestic violence to fill up the application uh, and in wake of the recent uh, judgment by the supreme court yesterday that there is a huge uh, sort of a lacuna as far as the appointment of protection officers is concerned who are required to assist the victims of domestic violence and part 2 of the question is uh, what is the status of the dir that is the domestic incident report and the form 2 which is the application under section 12 of the act uh, if you could please uh, share your views on these like isn't the protection officer required to fill the application under section 12 first of all when it comes to the protection officer yes there is a protection officer given by the act and ideally they should be protecting and being there with the victim and helping them fill the forms and mention the report of the domestic violence however unfortunately in practice like the mentioned by the supreme court there being a lack of protection officers it is not per se done in practice because the bombardment like i mentioned the reason why things are delayed in india is because of population the bombardment of domestic violence is so high that each like the protection officer following up and mentioning everything each and all of this you know together is difficult i have been part of this career enough to go to the police stations at night for my clients and i know trust me they are not exactly in the physical and the mental capacity to deal with each domestic violence victim because the victim doesn't come alone she comes with all of her pains and troubles so or with extra family people sorting out their hassles and troubles and their ego clashes and their anger and they not physically being violent in the police station is such a pain to eventually go up and actually help her form fill everything gets difficult so they delegate delegate is how they will call up the lawyers who are connected in these matters often and they keep meeting them in the court so they delegate to the lawyers ki you help her file this complaint you help her file this uh, application in court or whatever is her grievance you help her file we will do the fir if she needs an fir to be done we'll do the fir we'll do the 498a we'll do all of those criminal related work when it comes to these filing of applications please deal with it because it becomes tedious for them trust me half of most of the victims unfortunately in india end up coming going to the police to actually help is in the night when things have not like you know when things are no, no nothing's open nothing's available and things have reached to that level she's in pain or she is mentally not able to suffer anymore it's always in the evening time and it is disheartening to see it happening in india but it is a fact and so this question of the protection officer being there to help yes allowed given practicality not possible that's the reason why the police even the supreme court has mentioned that there is a lack there is a lack because the bombardment of troubles is so much uh when it comes to the following up of the application yes the court is person has the benefit of legal aid and lawyers following up is tedious because the procedure is in such a way that when you fo- uh, when you file the application the uh, this has to go through the protection officer uh, the application has to go to the opposite party to through the protection officer to get it to to the postal status gets a little longer gets delayed by a month or two at least in bombay we have the trouble of a month or two and by that time my client is sitting on my head literally it is not fun it is not fun handling a person who's a victim to situations going through the tedious tedious troubles of procedure because we have due process of law and not exactly the spirit of law so because you have to follow the procedure per se as the proce- procedure says it it becomes difficult it's only in places where the procedure gives you a little bit of leeway is when people take the benefit of like okay fine let's delegate this to another person or try to make it quicker but this it is mostly the trouble is this ki the population procedure things take long so like it takes a month or two by that time the person is irritated and frustrated it's like mai kar do you know mai kar khatam kar lo so it leads to eventually mediation also then so after the domestic violence report is filed a under section 12 everything is done you can you are so close to actually getting your uh, grievance heard and relief come through the process is so tiring 
for the applicant the applicant is like chal yaar let's come to our settlement let's do this mediation and now it's like how we say it in um, bombay mandavli kar lete yeah so it's a very harsh way of saying it but it is it comes down to let's mediate and let's wrap it up instead of prolonging it because ye do teen mahine mein mera anxiety has reached the roof and i have you know yelled at my lawyer i have almost fought with everybody i have seen because i'm so anxi- anxious and i want to go up with the judge i want to tell people all my troubles but the procedure does not let you do it immediately it gives you that one two months delay on account of following of every other step and that's mm-hmm. the reason why ideally they hit for mediation <laughs> so there is a lacuna i mean uh, it's only on paper most definitely there is are undeniably there is right and uh, judgment saying that dir is not mandatory doesn't help no it doesn't help because let's be honest even if it there is no mandatoryness of it the amount of pressure coming on the police they'll be like are nahi hota hum sir baba please tu kar le and if they come to a lawyer the lawyer will file an application they will not do any other way around it no right. so we need another if this has to be attacked per se it just not only protection officers we need an entirely different wing in the police force itself which is going to be very difficult like even cyber crime ka wing इंडिया में खड़ा होने के लिए कितना टाइम लगा इन द पुलिस सो दिस इज गोइंग टू टेक अनदर लॉन्ग टाइम नॉर्मली इन अ डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस यू टेंड टू यू नो गेट अ रिप्लाई व्हेन यू फाइल द एप्लीकेशन यू आर गेटिंग अ रिप्लाई फ्रॉम द अदर साइड नाउ नॉर्मली अ पर्सन वुड नेवर एक्सेप्ट दैट ही हैज बीन वायलेंट और शी हैज बीन वायलेंट आई मीन दे यूजुअली इट्स द मेल सो नॉर्मली दे वुड नॉट एक्सेप्ट व्हाट इज इफ इट्स अ केस ऑफ व्हेन अ पर्सन इज मेंटली इल you know there are signs of mental illness and it's uh, probably let's say you know uh, something which doctors would uh, possibly confirm you know but the thing is uh, you know you don't want that person to know you, you want an order so that you know you have to bring some kind of control on that person so how does that happen because uh, usually i mean a normal suit is uh, i understand what it would involve you know cross replies and you know verification and all but what how does one protect uh, regarding a mentally ill person because there are many cases there are people who are, it's obviously a mental imbalance which is leading to this kind of reactive violence get an order without his knowledge that is difficult possible. that is little difficult okay. why it is difficult is because uh, so when you come to domestic violence domestic violence you have to define your violence in this case yeah. it becomes a violence only if the person has been diagnosed with a mental illness is aware of their mental illness diagnosis is aware that the medication will help that person to get better denies to take the medication because it loves and enjoys the violence that bring uh, is brought upon him uh, because of the uh, mental illness so i'll tell you i have a client who's had bipolar i've gone through this i understand what you are you're coming from so bipolar is a sickness which is a mental imbalance of manic depression you in your manic state you're excessively happy you're excessively powerful about many things depression is the right opposite you are not able to do anything nothing i mean like you'll be in bed for days so when it comes to a manic depression part it could be the male it could be the female whoever is suffering from this sickness i'm talking about one particular sickness i'm not talking about all spectrums of mental illnesses however the understanding yeah. is the same uh, when there is a mental illness if there is an awareness of the mental illness by both the parties involved because it cannot be just one person knowing it has to be both the person having knowledge of it having understood that since there is a mental illness suffered by one person and the other person is the victim or the sufferer of the person suffering the mental illness there has to be a proper medical information with regards to how to tackle that once there is a medical information of how to tackle it by counseling by medication by exercise and by whatever if you have all of those knowledge and the person who is suffering the mental illness also has the knowledge also has the understanding that the medication is needed and important when the medication is denied when the correct treatment is denied when all of these uh, procedures to get them back to normal uh, society is denied and they prefer staying in their violent state caused by mental illness is violence for the person suffering it you can file a domestic violence against the person because of their mental illness you have issues attach all of the reports attach all of the medications attach the reasons why not been taken it and all of those reasons you have to streamline it again build a character it has to be a proper arc 
ki how it started and how it's going on right now and then when you file this you obviously have to mention it and the other person has to be knowing that this is filed against that person now if the person shows up to court very well if the person does not show up to court file for ex parte because after being informed of the application the person is not been present the person is not wanting to defend themselves then ex parte then get an order against that person this training order is one of the best courses of action initially you know there has to be a restraining order at least for some amount of space that person doesn't come to you physically and then eventually you can go on to other reliefs that you are mentally thinking that you know is okay do i want to stay in the relationship to i not because once you have the space to breathe because of the restraining order you'll be like ha theek hai abhi at least i can think about what what i want to do do i want to stay in the relationship not what how do how do i figure around it so work around can, that part can we ask for him to be medically examined ha huh, that's what you can if you have a suspecting doubt there is a requirement for medical uh, treatment there is a requirement for medical analysis because sometimes you know uh, depression is one thing but manic depression is another domain then you yeah. have schizophrenia that's another domain they all look and feel yes. similar but they are not everything is different when it comes to it if you look at it from a psychiatric point of view there is a little difference in all of them so you have to understand what medical can get the victim Sorry. can ask for it yeah, without uh, for it. without the uh, other person knowing about it it is difficult without, without the other person because you have to send notice if the notice sent and the person is not replying to the notice uh-huh. then there is and if the person is replying to the notice then it is very good for you because you in court can say ki like you go for the medication if the person says no then the question comes if you think you are normal you will go if you think you are sick you are denying to go that means you know you are sick means there is a problem since we are uh, discussing about the drafting application mm-hmm. suppose you know if i am writing and uh, writing a drafting application for child access for example is it mm-hmm. or or for that matter any any application and which is not, and and things which is naturally understood like you know have a to have a child access for a father or, or for a mother you know do we need to like you know for everything for every for every normal thing which is normally understood do we need to uh, give some citation of the judgments is it really necessary to like you know while drafting our application give citations of the judgment because because the section 20 or uh, the child access section says that you know if the father is is not harming to the child and then the access can be allowed so it is it is it is quite normal like you know the most of the time the, the the father is not harming the child so do we need to in that case do we need to also give uh, write a, a good language and also uh, also write a citations of the judgments so uh, when it comes to access to child in domestic violence cases the court ideally understands that this is a civil matter however if the case is grievous to the extent that the woman has claimed that she has been harmed so harshly the thought process taken by the court is instead of filing your applications left right and center father mother fighting over access and everything the child is called to court if the child is some uh, of an age that can talk if it's a minor considerably when it comes to access to the child the child is uh, asked to be called in court and the behavior of the child is seen in court why because many a times the abuser is abusive only to so there is a thing called conjugal paranoia it's a mental issue of conjugal paranoia conjugal means a relationship where you have sexual relationship so paranoia is you're always in fear and care that the person you are with you will leave you or will harm you you're like it's a paranoid situation so your issues are normally with your conjugal person and not to your children or your parents so it's only with your conjugal person that you are always going to be in constant issues with and violence and whatever it's always a friction so what happens is the person is violent towards the person they are living with their spouse their partner but when it comes to the child there is another absolute different characteristics of the person that comes out as a father as a guardian as a protector as a guide as a teacher I, you will not even consider that the insan ek hi nahi ho sakta ye alag alag hai why because there is a situation like this that are happening with the spouse so they don't understand if you are violent to your spouse how are you not violent to your child you have to be you cannot be the same so that's a problem this is the reason why the court instead of you filing in all of those uh, explanations giving in court the judges i to what i've seen in my practice also the judges suggest that the child be brought to court the 
nature of, of the father and the the connection be noted in court ki if the child is comfortable with the father or not so access is granted however it is given in a secured environment where the fear is not there even in the mind of the court and not in the mind of the mother so you are given access in a public setup or with a family member or in the court itself where there is a child okay. meeting play area so in the court itself you are allowed to give access so when it comes to access to of the father and the to the child in a domestic violence setup instead of focusing only on giving your citations and your arguments and your explanation plead to the court that the child be brought to the court and the relationship be noted in front of the judge of the parent and the child jhoot nahi bolte bacche agar baap se khauf hai beta to baap se khauf hai wo shakal pe dikhega agar nahi hai pyar hai mohabbat hai pyar pasand hai to papa ke paas bhaiya adur se bhi dikhega to bhag ke jayenge let's be honest there is not one child who will not run to the father agar you like even if you see a 1 2 km far then the child will run to the father है ना लेकिन अगर खौफ है तो बाजू में पास कॉस दूर लेकिन ना इंच भी दूर है ना इंसान रोएगा सो द अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द कोर्ट इज इट इज बेटर टू सी द रिलेशनशिप ऑफ द चाइल्ड एंड द फादर एज अपोज टू यू ओनली डिफेंडिंग द फादर एंड आस्किंग द चाइल्ड बिकॉज इफ यू सेंड एन साइटेशन देर आर साइटेशन अगेंस्ट यू देर इज अ लॉट आर्ग्यूमेंट वेन कम्स टू आर्ग्यूमेंट इन कोर्ट the judge knows the lawyers know there are plenty of judgments out there to come up with any amount of argument for and against but a relationship is something we cannot argue we cannot yes. define that you cannot define the love and affection of a child for the father and you cannot vice versa so this part this question i agree we you want to attach our uh, citations you can there are plenty of them there is kolkata high court there is delhi bombay supreme court every you have a lot of judgments but it is better to plead that the parent and the child be able to meet in court bol do to aapke samne dekhenge aapke chamber mein milenge judges ki chamber mein put a chamber summons go all that matter if you want a secure environment let they be in court what is the most secure place anything happens the police are right here there will be no harm done to the child so it is better to call it over here make the judge also feel ki ha theek hai we are open to meet in the court so when they see this they will want to work around how to do work your visitation rights so that visitation doesn't harm the child and it is also good for the mental the benefit of the parents because the parent one parent will be like are iske sath kya ho raha hai the other parent is like milne nahi deti hai so you don't want that mental uh, clash happening there are many whatsapp chats which are there you know which are against the contrary to the allegation which the petitioner or the respondent you know is making it how important or you know how whatsapp chat is has a weightage in the in the arguments or in the evidence stage or you know on the cross examination time or you know when it comes to whatsapp chat i give you <laughs> right now i am dealing with a case where we are arguing on the whatsapp chat <laughs> yeah. no the trouble what happens in whatsapp chat it is out of context let's be honest it is out of context completely kyunki situation koi aur chor hota hai chat mein kuch aur nikalta hai you don't know how to connect them it is irritating cuz the person as such is not a person who is harsh but let's be honest in regular colloquial language we like to write up etc chats mein nikalte and mm-hmm. jab nikalte chats mein the person who wants to use it against you will use it against you to yeah so, because there will be like see the person is so harsh the person is so abusive is the, right. even on the chatting the person cannot hold it stung he keeps on or she keeps on try, uh, ranting away and is so angry is always in this mood of in you know, a hitting and harming people so it is always out of context yes it's an electronic evidence will be considered in court undeniably again back up with your story I told you it's a character build up so you have to build up a character story for this person Why you have to build up a character story so that when the WhatsApp chat messages aata hai, you have already told you the back story of it. So it mm-hmm. is difficult. I am right now on that stage only arguing with the courts only. This WhatsApp chat is a disconnect to the actual situation that has happened. So it can make or break your case. It's a very harsh, very harsh. It's based on the merit of the situation only. Each case has its own merit. You can only talk about it based on the merit of the situation. Others, it will not be included in court. Not possible. It is included. It is uh, electronic evidence. It will be accepted. It will be included. It will save your case. It can also break your case. That's a difficult and part. How important is to while drafting our application? How important is to use the legal language, or you know, or it is fine if we 
if i use a simple language which is understandable you know what what is my prayer you know what what i'm trying to say to the judge so what do you uh, what do you prefer I you know using simple language let's be honest use simple language don't go into colloquial english language don't go into the fancy flowery language that they like to fill us up with in law school oh law school fills you up with this archaic english language stick to simple language the language which you can talk i can listen i can understand there is no Good. argument there is no ambiguity do not yeah. be ambiguous if you know your language very well like when i write a word which i feel is a little too heavy for the petition i always understand each and every aspect of the definition of that uh, word like yeah. go to google go to oxford dictionary keep synonyms ba- synonyms baju mein i always keep a dictionary when i'm writing because i need to understand the definition of the word yeah. the synonym of the word if it can be taken in a am- manner ambiguous or any other manner that is not per se giving me the def- impact that i need to show for my client i don't use a word do not use flowery language if you cannot back it up okay like non challengingly something that a word means obviously like to say the respondent non challengingly just uh, hit the applicant and walked away so you that's a very heavy word if you say written in regular uh, application mm. or you have to back it up by saying that in a the build up the character the character is somebody who is uh, who doesn't bother about it one slap they there he doesn't care he moves on that is the language if you are going to bring to write such language your draft also should support such language if not just write simple obvious word use kar lo simple word use karo make keep it as possible to the matter as opposed to using flowery language and then ruining your case don't 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 even bother even using legal idioms those latin idioms we were taught don't even bother using them if you are not going to be use it is not going to affect your case if it's not give you weight and support your client don't don't bother i have never used those latin idioms kitna public use karta i don't bother because it will not help my case my person my uh, client is somebody who talks marathi i have to sit down and make that person understand first of all whatever written in english so no i'm sorry how am i going to use words that is going to be too flowery for them to understand at the end of the day in the box in they are going to stand we are not going to stand we are lawyers we will be questioning them they are going to be standing in the box हमारा जो एप्लीकेशन लिया है ना उनके सामने रखा जाएगा और बोला जाएगा ये क्या लिखा है डू यू नो व्हाट इज रिटन ओवर योर द लीगल इडियम डू यू नो व्हाट इज रेस्ट जुडिकेटा ऑल ऑफ दोस थिंग्स दे विल बी लाइक हाय मैं को नहीं मालूम है देन योर केस फॉल्स यस यू आर योर टू प्रोटेक्ट एंड सपोर्ट योर क्लाइंट एंड इफ दे आर नॉट एबल टू डू दैट योर केस फॉल्स देन हाउ व्हाट इट रिफ्लेक्ट्स ऑन यू व्हाट काइंड ऑफ अ लॉयर यू आर आई नेवर यूज एनीथिंग व्हिच माय क्लाइंट विल नॉट अंडरस्टैंड इफ माय क्लाइंट इज ऑफ द लैंग्वेज which i can use flowery language like recently i have a doctor as my client and she does understand my flowery language i am using that when i have had a client who is of a different education level you know educated mm. ma hai lekin marathi language i cannot ask her to you know, you know read my english and say ki ha bhai theek hai nahi na so depends while submitting income asset liability that doc- the, the attached enclosures that we attach with the income asset liability that the bank statement and itr and all that the bank statement that has to be has to be certified from the bank itself or or it if it is not certified and print out copies attached is it's fine print out copies enough you don't have to have certified we, very few people actually get a certified bank statements that is if the court asks normally people just remove the print out because wo email pe milta hai na print out le lete wohi attach karte the court yeah. feels there are suspicious activity because yeah. you can see there is an income or a withdrawal but wahan pe number nahi dikh raha something somebody is you know uh, they yeah. try to retract you know some people like to photoshop and there's a re- they can see there is a possible retraction then the court will ask because agar judge ne commerce karke baitha hai to he understands yeah. you don't want to mess around with the judge who's done no commerce <laughs> yeah and i i found in one case that you know there are 500 pages of whatsapp chats so you know finding it important once finding it important is difficult and then you know the evidence evidence stage gets close and you know and and the person finds it some other important chats later at the later stage you know once once the stage is closed then what is the possibility that you have experienced that you know after even after closing the stage you know the evidence can be court have taken it normally court reopen nahi karta evidence however if you if your argument has not happened then in your argument try mentioning that's the reason why court gives you enough time for evidence close so even the evidence close process the after you have closed your evidence yeah. the court asks you are you done is there everything done 
only then the court is like okay fine okay file your uh, clo- evidence close process others the court will give you another date let's be honest one thing about indian courts i like is they will give you that much time to uh, file your evidence yes there is delay yes the people are crying yes clients are cribbing everybody is happening but for us as a legal person you have done your job comes first so the court gives you that much time and uh, gives you that much attempts ki give your entire evidence and then we'll close it there is no requirement of rushing with it even for mutual cases yeah there's something as it's a close case mutual divorce is a close case we all know it's going to end up properly divorce ho jayega the but in that also evidence close the court is requiring that you file the evidence close process because bas abhi khatam ho gaya abhi aur kuch nahi add karne ka waisa so if is something for something uh, that is a close case uske liye bhi kar sakte to fir the other ones also the court will allow no problem while writing this closing of the stage of evidence you know is it necessary to also you know the mention the amount of people that we want as a witness that is also necessary at the at the at the stage of evidence but you know how this this many people we want to to come in our case as a bit as a witness so that is also mandatory to mention in everything about the witnesses name and all yeah certainly you have to mention that you know so and so so and so person also just put a mentioning over there kafi hai ki like this person has a uh, given testimony and that person gave testimony so it adds to your case because when you're filing your evidence like i said it is i say this and i say that so mm-hmm. when the person who had, uh, you had called on record to give your de- his or her deposition in favor of your case that person's deposition deposition can be mentioned na it backs up your case also wo argument mein bhi aata hai so no problem it comes to dv cases majorly dv cases settle ho jate like i said it is so tedious yeah. people only like to settle it. very few go to the evidence stage because that person has gone through so much that they want the court to listen to everything and every possible aspect of it But then many times you know the the respondent or the petitioner have like you know unjustifiable demands that you know that the person thinks you know he, he should do it like this he should like you know settle like this the other person thinks you know she should settle like this mm-hmm. that is how case go on so th- this is some that is the reason that is majorly the reason why it comes so which the court understands the problem is actually the settlement it is not the abuse so the court yeah. suggests that they come down to a middle ground of understanding if not the court will suggest them an amount and say this is your amount and i want you to close it because ye dikhta abuse nahi hai time pass hai mera sorry to say but judge yeah. ko dikhta hai <laughs> in dv case after the evidence Mm-hmm. after the chief examination of the applicant not the cross okay after the chief examination of the applicant can a rejoinder reply be filed by the respondent see when it, when the chief is filed even the chief is, of the other uh, respondent is filed and then the cross is done so if you are talking about rejoinder to the reply you can file it in your evidence only why you want to file a rejoinder to the reply because that stage is just before the evidence we are filing the rejoinder I mean, what will be the requirement for filing a rejoinder to a reply when you can file everything in your evidence? The court will be like, evidence why are you respondent? Respondent, sir, respondent's का evidence का अगर तुम file कर सकते हो, तो why are you filing a rejoinder to the reply? मतलब you have to add to your reply, add it all in your evidence. There is a fact, or there is a pleading, or there is something that uh, the respondent has missed in his WS. that new facts can be brought up in the evidence or the chief examination of the respondent you can do that but you have to define why you delayed it and why you did not file it in your reply you have to mention that because obviously there will be like arey bhai ye can i have a gaya logic so you have to de- define ki like that did not like the other person said he found some details in the whatsapp chat later afterwards so it normally happens that you file things and then you realize arey this point was never touched upon this point was never mentioned so you can refer back saying that okay this is a few points which were missed out in the reply this is additional however attachment of these things have already been given so kindly note on these particular incidences vesa you can do that pleadings have already gone then only we can add the evidence see in your evidence if you are adding things all about all about new Absolutely. for example completely new you are saying we can add in our evidence uh, means uh, respondents evidence i have done that we have added completely new things in our evidence and we have quoted that we have uh, not added in the this because it has happened during the course of the case because course of the case chhe mahine mein khatam nahi hota it takes time so few things come up and those facts uh, suppose let us say uh, they have not come up during the course of the proceedings 
and uh, somehow it has, they have been missed by the respondent though they were present even before his reply even before the start of the case but respondent has missed in his ws even then also it can be filed or it can be brought up onto the record in the evidence of the respondent see adil when somebody misses something na ws mm-hmm. mein file kiya and wo miss ho gaya mm-hmm. the next stage is ideally you file your rejoinder or the court gives you the issues that time itself before filing the evidence itself normally the person will be able to mention these things have been missed out and unko attach karke file kar sakte rejoinder karke because before the evidence is your rejoinder stage now once you have filed the, the applicant has filed the evidence unka evidence ho gaya chief ho gaya it's your chance for filing your chief chief ho gaya cross ho gaya if your uh, chance of filing your uh, chief and you have filed something absolutely new na backing uh, with your uh, what's a uh, ws whatever you have filed you have mentioned in your chief plus your bank mm-hmm. something completely new which you have not mm-hmm. mentioned in the ws has to be mentioned why was it not written in the ws is because we found something out or we realized a particular fact has not been mentioned so court will bring out mm-hmm. this for topic your cross examination may be a topic niklega why was this not filed in your ws then this will mm-hmm. become your character sketch you have to be very clear how to defend it adding is not the problem the point is how you defend yourself when you are asked in your cross ki why was this not brought up at the time of filing your ws there was the delay from your why was the delay from your end that you had to wait till the evidence to file something that has happened way before that we can okay. cover so it is not the point of adding things you can add like i said before i'm saying it again you can add everything in your evidence once you are filing but that's what evidence has to be everything there cannot be anything after evidence evidence has to be everything but when you are adding things which is completely new like you said has not happened in the course of the case had happened before it was not filed mm-hmm. in the ws the question will come in your cross and your client will be asked why was this not filed in your ws at the time of filing why was there not a rejoinder at the time of filing your ws why was there this like because there's a, let's be honest there's a lot of difference between uh, filing of ws and uh, questioning you know evidence stage mm-hmm. so because mm-hmm. there's a time gap that time you ne kiya tumne the rejoinder abhi kyu kar rahe ho uh, addition you have to know how to defend your client your client should know how to tackle such questions saying there was a require why because i was the victim actually not her you have to have a proper def- uh, reason back it up so, uh, give it a good substance that na i am the actual victim she is not the victim she is the abuser i am the abused my brain was not working or i was not thinking straight i could not tell my lawyer properly give instructions to my lawyer i was being given instructions i give instructions based on my understanding of the court that time i did not understand now you have to give uh, give an understanding i don't know when you are not being able to uh, give some detail which was there present which you not mention now how do you uh, defend yourself because then you okay. come up with the bad question na then you are like na are ye to janu ki game khel raha hai because you hmm. becomes bad on you reflects bad on the respondent saying i this is a game they are playing they think court is just time pass then the judge gets pissed then you don't want to do that <laughs> normally uh, how to defend this uh, situation like uh, the reasons that you said that mujhe ha mujhe pata nahi tha main disturb tha aisa respondent agar bolega so uh, again i think that is up to the uh, that depends on the discretion of the court it does and also depends on the merit of the case because every case is different like we lawyers we all know there is not one case copy paste to the other case there's a lot of difference But is there any sure shot way that you know it it can be uh, done like sure shot way to what you can adding is not the problem i like sure shot way or defending is there on your other uh, skill of uh, the merit of the case skill of the lawyer skill of the respondent the uh, it all of those uh, things together because same case two three uh, if you look at it also multiple cases are sounding very similar different judgments come out and accordingly we yes. have yes yes so that's uh, the law yeah hmm. so instead of doing it in our in the respondents chief examination hmm. i think it would be little more easier if we do it by a rejoinder to the reply after the after the chief of the applicant that will be more easier so when you talk about like this if you difficult to defend then yes better that way mention it to the court uh, request it to the mm-hmm. court the court is ha ah, that you can do that is one thing which is i've done it in my recent case i requested the court to file a rejoinder 
and the court accepted my request of filing a rejoinder and that's why i filed the rejoinder if the court would have said file it in your uh, evidence then would have been in my favor then yeah okay final file it in my evidence then you can defend yourself better that be a sure shot way you can say that ask okay, the court that means we have got we have got two options na even if the court yeah. refuses now the court may give the option ki you file it along with your evidence yeah so that is a sure shot way of defending yourself and ask the court only ask the authority me kya karu 